Village Rails. This is a game that comes in a small box, but there is a lot of game in it. We are going to create a grid of 12 cards, and in so doing we're gonna complete 7 railroads, and each time we'll score different things, and at the end of the game we'll have one final scoring with some final features, and the player with the highest score wins the game. Each player will build their railroad system within a frame, such as this one. At the beginning of the game, you will receive a different frame randomly. So that means that you will have different starting features, different starting terrains when you create your line. For example, here I have a line that starts with water, another one that starts with forest, another one that starts with wheat, and so on and so forth, in different combinations. Then, you will have some money that you need to spend to uh, collect uh, different kinds of resources. The game will last 12 turns, and in those 12 turns, you will place exactly 12 cards within your grid. When you place a new card, it needs to be attached to the frame or to a previously placed uh, card, and so that's that's the way it is, really. The game is very simple in essence because each turn you will have to take a card from this market here and you can also take another card from this selection here and these cards will give you extra ways of scoring points. These cards, they come from the same deck. Magic! They're double-sided. So you're gonna place that deck there and again you're gonna have a line of four trips that you can plan when you acquire one of these cards, you can place it next to one of your of your railroads and each can take up to two so for example like that that means that those two cards apply to this railroad when i complete it which is when the line that, that starts from it reaches one of the edges of my tableau then when it's completed i check to see if i fulfill them and if i fulfill them i score victory points and you have trackers that you will use precisely to well keep track of victory points as the game progresses each line can have up to two trips that are planned so that's that's what it how it may look like again 12 cards here and a number of trips planned around it so each turn, again, you will have to take a terrain card or railroad card and add it to your grid, and then optionally you can take one of these. When you're taking a card, if you take the one that is the furthest from the deck, the deck is up there, trust me, believe me, there you go. If you take the one that is the furthest from the deck, it is for free. If you take one that is not the furthest, then you have to place a coin on each card that is further from the deck than the one you're taking. And that means that then maybe, and then that's, that was, that was that for that turn, then the next player wants that card, what well, that card for example, then they place a coin here and they take this one. And of course you will collect coins that have been placed there in previous turns. So that's how it is. The uh, trips that you attach to your railroads, the trips that you attach the furthest from the deck cost three coins always. And if you wanna get another one, then again, you need to place a coin on each trip and then still pay three for the base, for the base cost. So that's how that part works. Uh, well, again, once you have your things, uh, you attach them, and when you attach them to your railroad, you can choose the orientation in the sense that it can be this way or this way, no other orientation. And again, uh, some of these may be particularly long and elaborate. Uh, for example, this one that started here is still going. And some other ones may be pretty short, like that one that starts there, it's over already. Once a line is completed, let's, let's finish another one just for the sake of the exemplification. So for example, this one is now complete. We are gonna score the features that you see on them. So for example, here, the symbol here simply gives you the corresponding amount of, of victory points. 
this symbol here, the barn, each barn has a certain, a specific kind of terrain associated, say wheat for example, you score a point per indicated type of terrain time in the line that you're connecting. Farm select varieties, so if you have that symbol on the line, for example, this one will have a farm when I score it, then that symbol scores me a point for each type of terrain, they like variety. Signals, that one there, the more I have on the line that I'm scoring, the more points there. And those are the features that you score during the game. At the end of the game, you also count the numbers of lines that have sidings on them. It's not just the number of sidings, a line with multiple sidings doesn't do anything for you. Well, it counts as one, but the number of different lines that have sidings, for example, if the game was over right now, totally illegal because I don't have 12, but just say that right now I have two lines with sidings. And so, we score extra points. As you can see, there can be quite a number of points that can be collected that way. Plus again, remember, <clears throat> In this case, when I'm scoring this line here, for example, I'll score two points per type of feature on the line, and if there are there's no water on the line, so that would be a terrible place where I want to place that one, maybe place it there instead. And so again, you score those. When a line is completed, you also associate it with a terminus card. You will always have a line of three, and terminus cards are the main way of collecting money during the game. When you call, when you finish a line, you play a car, a terminus card from your hand on it, and that will give you always at least three coins, plus more depending on how well you're matching the requirements. Also, at the, when you do that, you will remove all the plan cards that may be associated with the line you're scoring, and you place a terminus there. It is also a nice visual reminder that that line is done. You cannot add to it. You cannot score more points based on it. Nothing like that. So basically, this is how you play the game. Each turn you will collect a card and possibly also a trap to place to, uh, next to an unfinished line. During a turn you may finish multiple ones, so you score them when you, when you finish them, scoring more points, uh, collecting money through the terminus card. Continue like this until the end of the game. Perform final scoring, play with the highest score, wins the game. When it comes to games about trains, I feel that other than war games, uh, sometimes train games are some of the most brutally vicious and confrontational games that I ever play. So here, together with Ticket to Ride, this is one that is not uh, very confrontational, it's not cutthroat, actually it's even less confrontational than Ticket to Ride because uh, I'm building my tableau, you're building yours. Sure, when a when a car comes out that has sidings on, people will probably want to go for it because uh, there are so many points to be had at the end of the game. And not only do you want to get them, but you also want to prevent other people from creating powerful combos. So there's going to be that race to that uh, valuable car, but also well, maybe I don't have the money at that time. Maybe I had to think if indeed doing that is going to damage me in some other ways. So, I'm doing my tableau, you're doing yours, and at the end we score them, and that's very nice and it's very sweet. There's an overall friendly, relaxed atmosphere around the table, as you can expect in many cases where indeed there is a strong puzzle element and everybody is, is creating their own puzzle element. It reminded me the general idea of a game that I played and reviewed a couple of months ago, Farmer's Market, in which at the beginning of the game you collect cards that will determine uh, what you're going to score in the various columns and rows of your grid, and then you place cards in there. Here you have a similar idea, but the fact is that you change the things that you add, the things that you score as the game progresses rather than at the beginning. And there are really nice timing elements here for those trips which is, it's nice to get them early on, uh, but then I'm, what if I'm not able to complete the lines? Or complete the lines in a way that will score them. You're going to complete every line. Uh, or, well, I'll just wait until, oh, yeah, there's a line without the forest, so I'm going to get the trip card that uh, that gives me points for having forest, but no, Bob got that card. So it's, again, the really nice timing elements, but again, it's not, it's unlikely that maybe Bob went out of his way and spent a lot of money to get that card just to get it from me. So, 
It's very interesting that you have the tableau element, you're trying to maximize the things you want to do, and also you're gonna have, during the game, as part of the game itself, chances of scoring certain lines more if the card is still there. But overall you have a really nice interesting puzzle here, you have a little bit of a point salad and that's fine because each line is going to score you something, you're going yay me, uh, and you're trying to, so everybody gets points all the time uh, and that's nice and that's fun, but you're trying to do that better than, than everybody. I think this game really uh, comports with the general change, the general trend in modern gaming towards uh, we don't like to lose stuff, we have lots of version, we want to collect stuff all the time, so why not give players new things, new, new railroads, new symbols, new scoring things every turn? That doesn't change the fact that somebody's still gonna do that more efficiently than other players. And of course, as you're waiting for that thing, for that specific kind of terrain, that feature, there is going to be mounting tension as your window of opportunity narrows and that card may or may not be there. When it's out, you may not be able to afford it. Something about the economy is also pretty interesting because you will feel that at the beginning the economy is pretty tight, uh, which it is. Uh, it, sometimes you just get stuck with the card, the only card you can afford. Uh, I'm, uh, yes, maybe you get another one, but then have the money to buy the trip. Until you start building and closing some of those lines, then the terminus cards will give you more things. So there is an idea here that you maybe an approach is that you want to try to close a couple of profitable. Uh, lines early on to get that money to gain have more flexibility to complete some major lines later on with a lot of nice synergies and nice combos and trips planned around them but definitely uh, there is the, there is the fact that the economy feels tighter at the beginning becomes a little looser uh, later on but then maybe you get you splurge because of that and then at the end when you really need that last card you don't have the money and then next time you learn from that valuable lesson. So the economy is definitely something to keep in mind. And it's interesting because it's not super tight, but it's definitely not particularly free or flexible always. Uh, everything has a cost and that is part of the experience. So village rails, don't be fooled by, you know, when you see a game this size, you usually think of a smaller super light filler. And this game is a light game from the point of view of the rules, but from the point of view of the thinking and the strategy, it has layers of depth that emerge only as you play the game and that are pleasantly surprising. It's, it's more of a puzzle game, more of a thinking game than you would expect from the small size, from the short uh, rule book. Definitely enjoyable, definitely a game that I look forward to playing more in the future and it's a game that I can accommodate quite easily uh, in a game night. Again, not a filler, I guess two committed players that know the rules so they can play pretty quickly but the thinking is such that it'll still take, you know, uh, at least 45 minutes to play, probably half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on the number of players. So it's not super short. But it doesn't overstay its welcome either because you have 12 turns, but a lot to do, a lot to score, a lot to consider in those 12 turns. Definitely a fun game.